just add a little bit with our knife of some thinned out with liquid white and titanium white some of the water and I'm just going to take a little bit of blue in with that water and we'll just mix it up so it's titanium white Prussian blue and liquid white and that gives me a very thin color and I can just put a couple of little water lines right over here Go ahead and add a little bit more. There we go. See how much pressure I'm doing putting that on. Go ahead. Take this off. Now that you got the line in, just want to fade out the back. Now let's put on the ground on the side, the riverbanks, and you'll start to see how this shapes out quite a bit. So there we go, we're bringing in the ground. I think it's important for you to see all of these different steps that it takes to make one of these streams. This is also a nice way of how to build a stream. Go ahead and put in your stream color, like right in here, and then add your riverbank. You can do it either way. You can add the riverbank and then the stream, but both of them will go together quite well. And now let's add the other side. Now you're starting to see the real power and effect of putting this color on and putting the rocks in first. How many times have you seen a stream built out there in the woods just for you to discover? And then someone says, oh, how deep is it? And you look at it, and you think that, oh, it's only a few inches deep. And you step in, and you go right up to your waist. Of course, that's when everybody laughs at you, and they say, oh, my goodness, didn't you know it was deep? I'm always the one that gets laughed at in those. So here we go, I'm just putting in this little bit of a, a grassy area just so you can see how the riverbank will feed into this and then we'll put a little bit of water lines there and you will have a fabulous little stream here in which the rocks are flowing. Just quickly going here and adding some more Ah, there we go. I love it when a plan comes together. Just adding, tapping. That's just some of our tappy grass that we use. You'll see that quite a bit in our foliage on foliage technique, where we show you how to do trees, bushes, grass, and other growing green things. Let's come over here. I guess this must be the sun side, and we're just getting very bright as we come here. One of the things I always tell my students is when they do this grass, make sure your hand is below, below your bristles, brushes. That really adds quite a bit in terms of how you're putting the paint onto the canvas and allows you to just essentially tap it in. We're just going to go ahead and put in a little more of this grass, and then we'll add this little stream. I'll even show you how to run water around a rock, if you will. Just coming in. I think I'm going to change the green just for fun. Okay, here we go. We'll add a little more yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is called an earth tone, and it's so exciting because 
It just makes grass and hills and other green things look so natural when you just add a touch of it. Don't get carried away with it. A little bit of a touch will go a long, long way. So here we are. We've just got a small river bank just coming in here. It's a stream or a river. I remember when I was growing up, my grandfather used to call them cricks. He says, Dell, did you been down to the creek today? I said, no, grandfather, I haven't been to the creek. And grandma gave me a nudge in the rump. And she goes, if your grandfather calls it a creek, it's a creek. Uh, I'll tell you, my grandparents paid a, played a major role in raising me. They played a major role throughout my whole life. I'm very grateful for them. So now we have this nice little stream, very quiet. And we have a little bit of the, just going to grab a fan brush right here, a number three fan brush. And we can stretch out the back. See, you can stretch this out all you want. Tone it down a bit if you want. You can even just come here and tone it. But there's those little rocks that are peeking through. Now, the other thing that I like to do is come and clean up the edges of the stream. So let me show you how you do that. Just come right in here with a small fan brush. Let's watch that again. You have to reload quite a bit. There's a lot of color there. That's all there is. Notice that I come back and just stretch that out to the middle of the stream. But I leave this edge alone. Because that's the part you've worked very hard to make, is that edge. And so we have a nice little natural water coming right up next to the edge. And then come back and have it run out. We'll even show you some other things here with, with the stream. This is a demonstration stream. And so as such, it's going to be used quite a bit just for you. There we are, just moving forward in this. It's so cool to be able to see rocks. You don't need to see every single one of them. But wherever it's calm and bright, you can see it. And that's what makes it so exciting. Being able to say, okay, what's in nature? I have taken a, a lot of courses, and I want to teach you something here that's extremely important. Okay, and a lot of people don't think about this. Art is not about how can I paint a willow tree? How can I paint an oak tree? How can I paint an evergreen tree? How can I paint a waterfall? Art is about learning how to paint what you see. See, if you learn that, then it doesn't matter what's in front of you. You are going to go ahead and be able to paint it. So then art becomes how to paint what you see. And that's what I'm doing with these techniques. Is I'm saying, if you see a willow tree, how would you go about it? If you see an evergreen tree, or a waterfall, or a seascape, or a little creek like this, how would you go ahead and paint what you're actually seeing? Now on this side, I am not putting in any of the water line, and that's because right in here, you see the water's edge, but over here you do not. 